So this, uh, you know, these last two games were certainly indicative of how conference play um, typically goes. You know, any team on any given day um, can beat another team, and LMU certainly showed us that on Saturday. And uh, this Pepperdine team came off of a really um, exciting win for them at Santa Clara, and you know they could have had a letdown, and they absolutely did not. Um, they came out and they battled to the end, and you know it was a really tough game for us, especially with Deb falling out. Um, you know, we had to play, um, you know, we're a lot of different people. We're fortunate we have a, you know, we, we have a decent rotation of nine or ten players that I feel like I can use. So I thought Lauren Christie came in, came in and gave us some really good minutes. I thought that, um, you know, Amy and Jess both do a great job in different ways of, of leading the floor uh, when they're on there. They both have different styles of play, but they both were really good in different situations for us. I thought Yo was you know, fantastic when she's shooting and scoring like that. That obviously gives us a huge lift on the offensive end of the floor. I thought Amelie um, played great defense. Um, you know, she's starting to, she's only nine months post-surgery and she's, you know, you know, rounding her way back into form of, you know, being a, you know, kind of a defensive stopper and being able to take people out of, out of the game. So um, it's just nice to be able to have, you know, have healthy bodies and be able to have a, a really good rotation of players. What kind of takeaways do you have from Deb following out? Is that something that's something you want to talk to her about? Is that concerning? Or was um, it just kind of the flow of this game? Was yeah, like I mean, I think that was, you know, her last foul, obviously. It, I mean, she just kind of turned around and tripped over a kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of the fouls, I just, you know, I thought she got some tough breaks on some of her foul calls, and we kind of didn't get her out of the game quick enough before she got that fifth one. Um, and, you know, Deb, Deb brings great energy. I think she's improving, you know, every single game. She gets better every practice. She's really intent on um, making herself a better player and a better teammate. And, you know, we just need to kind of keep encouraging her because she brings so much. And um, I think she's got such tremendous potential for us. So um, hopefully this is just kind of a one-off and, you know, we'll be able to keep her on the floor um, more as we, as we move forward because we definitely want to do that. At this point in the season, do you have a good sense of like where your depth is at, like in a game like this, for yeah. uh, just to be able to rotate a lot of them throughout your lineup? Yeah, I mean, it's general? you know we're we've not really been in this position. We could legitimately not just play nine players, um, but you know we have nine players that probably could start, mm -hmm. um, and so. You know, a player like Deb, who's like our second leading scorer, and, and Jasmine Gales that comes off the bench is our second, third leading scorer. Those kids could be easily, very easily starting for us or starting for any other team. And um, it asks a lot of them to be selfless and put themselves in that position where, you know, they're able to come off the bench and give us great energy, which is, that's, that's why I have them there because, you know, I, I know we're going to get some offense. I know we're going to get really good energy. and. Um, you know, I like right now starting a veteran group. We've got, um, I think I kind of have, with the group that we started today, there's 22 years of USF basketball experience among them. So um, it's, it's nice to be able to have a rotation. Sometimes it's hard to, um, like there's somebody sitting on the bench that I want to get in the game, but I'm not sure who I should sub out, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's a good problem to have, but, you know, I definitely, everybody wants to play. And, um, you know, part of us being successful is being able to manage um, you know, our, our own wants and our own egos with, you know, what's what's best for the team and how do we put a team on the floor every day that's going to be competitive and win the most games. Um, Abby starting today, like how's mm -hmm. her recovery, what's that been like for her and um, just how encouraging is it to see her perform? Yeah, I mean, Abby's been out of basketball for almost a full year, mm -hmm. you know, with her injury and, and like lit out of anything, out of physical activity for almost six months. So. Um, I think, you know, her brain and body connection isn't 100% right now. It just, it's going to take a little bit of time for her to kind of, to catch up with, you know, where, she, where her brain wants her feet and arms and hands to go all the time. But, you know, her toughness and just the experience, you know, having been here for five years is, you know, something to me that is really important that, um, you know, she can go in and, you know, I thought that group would get us a really good start, you know, to the to the uh, game, and then we're able to bring some players in off the bench, and um, you know, feel good about the kind of about the rotation. Mm -hmm. How important is you on just in games like this where it could have easily gotten out of hand, or mm -hmm. you lost that lead, but then she just goes off to just three three pointers yeah. in a row and is able to take over like that? That's the kind of player she is. I mean, she just we watch we see it every day. She's a phenomenal three point shooter and. Um, especially when she gets uh, on a roll and in a rhythm. You know, I've, I've seen her make 95 out of 115 three-pointers, you know, from a, in a drill that we do. She's just 
she's exceptional and um, you know the thing is we expect it every single game because we see it and you know that's not really not a realistic expectation you know everybody's gonna have games where you're up and down and especially you know their coach is saying, you know, you know, don't let 21 catch, don't let 20 deny the ball. So she's, she sees lots of different defenses. She sees teams' best defenders. And, you know, at, at the same time, she's able to remain remarkably consistent. So mm -hmm. um, it's a huge asset to have her. This is a game where you led basically throughout, but it felt so competitive. Like mm -hmm. at any point, you could come back. Like, how encouraging is it that you, that never happened? Are you guys were yeah. just like no. stop them? The, yeah. You know, basketball is a game of momentum. Mm -hmm. and. You know, every time they made a run, we were able to respond in a positive way with a run of our own, and that's going to be critical as we move forward because, again, every conference game is going to be, you know, super competitive. Everybody brings their best. It's, you know, there isn't, there isn't an easy game on the schedule from, from here on out as far as conference play is concerned. So, yeah, being able to, you know, kind of take somebody's punches and then get up and throw some punches of your own, I think that's going to be really important. Uh, Lauren today, she hasn't played a lot, obviously got hurt at the beginning of the month, but today big 10 and 5 in 23 minutes off mm -hmm. the bench. And obviously Pepperdine features a lot of tall players that you had to bring in that front court depth. Mm -hmm. Which What did you see from her today? Uh, it was really encouraging. I thought um, she did a nice job on the defensive end of the floor with her length for the most part. Um, we had some difficult matchups for our smaller lineup, so having her with some length under the basket on on 15, Abinma, um, you know, was important for us. And uh, I thought she facilitated some good things on the offensive end of the floor. I didn't think she tried to really do anything she isn't capable of doing. Um, I think she probably could have done, looked to score even a little bit more. But it was, you know, I thought she played a, a, just a solid game. You know, she did, she was pretty efficient. Well, she, you know, 10 points and five rebounds in her 22 minutes. I mean, that's a good line, especially for not, you know, she's been off with her ankle for about two weeks and, you know, really just kind of came back into practice over the last four or five days. So it would be good if, if she can give us some consistency. Now, for you personally, over this weekend, you crossed the 500 game coach threshold at this level. What does that number mean to you? I know coaches always take it game by game, but just knowing that you've done what you wanted to do and, and the sport you love for so long, what does that mean to you? I guess it means I'm getting old. I don't know. Um, you know, I, yeah, I didn't realize that was over 500 games, but it's they add up, you know, year after year. But uh, I feel very fortunate to be at University of San Francisco. You know, we support men's and women's basketball in a phenomenal way and um, give us the resources we need put, to put us in a position to be successful. So, and I have great kids to coach and a really good staff to work with. So, you know, just I do I enjoy every day that I'm here. Happy.